Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku. And tonight, we bring you a discussion about a paper that just came out June 15th, a late Cretaceous true polar wander oscillation. And we pontificate on what this paper means and as it relates to crustal slip. Now, before we get started, there's a couple things we need to go over. Now, according to the headlines, Earth tipped over on its side 84 million years ago and then righted itself, a new study finds. But before we get started, let's just talk about the Earth in general. This beautiful blue sphere. And I'm opening an image in this new tab to discuss some of the topics that are very pertinent to this podcast. Now, the Earth itself is an oblate spheroid, which means it's not round. It bulges at the equator due to rotational spin and many other factors. But there is a rotational pole on the north and south that our planet spins about. Now, the magnetic pole is completely independent of the rotational pole. The rotational pole is an axis on which the planet spins, which allows the sun to rise in the east and set in the west, like clockwork, and move from south to north during the solstices as it does its dance. The magnetic pole is completely independent of the rotational pole and has nothing to do with the rotational pole. The magnetic field is generated by the sun and earth connection and our solar system and our galaxy. And the magnetic pole moves around, all around, all the time. And it's now racing towards Siberia as the southern pole races towards Indonesia. Both will meet somewhere in the southern sea in a few decades or less. So if you have any questions relating to the rotational pole versus the magnetic pole, they have nothing to do with each other in the long term, geologic time. They are independent of each other and they are not related, according to many. Now the paper coming out June 15th, a late Cretaceous true polar wander oscillation adds insight to some of the discussion that we will hit on tonight, which includes crustal slip and polar wander. Now, true polar wander, or TPW, or planetary reorientation is completely different than magnetic reversals or excursions. This is the actual movement of an entire celestial body about its rotational axis, which would be quite catastrophic in my opinion. Devastating. Unimaginable. The psychological effects alone on the human species would be unprecedented. Now, it's well documented for other planets and moons that this occurs. But testing is prevalent in Earth's past is complicated by simultaneous motions due to plate tectonics. Now, what the hell does that mean? Well, if we're going to study the Earth and we're going to look into the geologic past on this section of this continent, let's say 80 million years ago, where was the continent actually based on plate tectonics or the movement of the plates? Was it here? Was it down here? Was it over here? Was plate tectonics moving the continent or was the pole shifting? That's the question. And how can we delineate the two? Well, probably impossible. But debate has surrounded the existence of a late Cretaceous true polar wander around 84 million years ago. Classic paleomagnetic data from the Scaglia Rosa limestone of Italy are the primary arguments against the existence of the TPW. But looking at one spot on Earth is not going to tell you anything. You need to look at multiple places to come to a conclusion. 
In this paper, they present new high-resolution paleomagnetic records from two overlapping stratigraphic sections in Italy. And the reason I like this is because they have continuous sedimentary stratigraphic sections which they, that provides the data. That means there was a basin present in Italy that was dropping down and collecting sedimentary data for eons. And that's what allows stratigraphers like myself to understand the paleo geographic record, the paleo climate, and basically how Earth was working tens of millions of years ago. The observations in this paper present the most recent large scale true polar wander documented and challenges the notion that the spin axis has been largely stable over the past 100 million years. What are they talking about? Well, many people over the last few decades have been talking about true polar wandering events. And, and some papers have come to light. And I didn't pick up the most recent one about Hawaii that we've showed in previous podcasts. But <clears throat> according to this scientist, during their undergraduate or graduate work towards their degree in geology and ge geophysics, that they first noticed the majority of northern Russia, Siberia, and northern Alaska were never fully glaciated during the last ice age. And we're talking about the Wisconsinian maximum about 26,000 years ago. This is recent time. And, and there's a question on why these regions were not glaciated. If, in fact, glaciations occur in a cyclic pulse, like we're watching, like the Earth is breathing, which... Our channel has purported, based on the Epica data and the GISP2 data, and my studies in academia. Now, this, we're talking about the last million years. Now, is this effect because of a polar wander? Does, does the rotational pole have to shift in order to get an ice age? Well... There's so much going on. Let's first talk about polar wander and what it means. And this might annoy you, and I hope it does. True polar wander is a solid body rotation of a planet or moon with respect to its spin axis, causing the geographic locations of the north and south poles to change, or wander. In a stable state, the largest moment of inertia axis is aligned with the spin axis with the smaller two moments of inertia axes lying in the plane of the equator. When this is not the case, true polar wander will occur. The planet or moon will rotate as a rigid body to realign the largest moment of inertia axis with the spin axis. The mass distribution of the Earth is not spherically symmetric, and the Earth has three different moments of inertia. The axis around which the moment of inertia is greatest is closely aligned with the rotation axis. The axis go... Now, how in the world anyone has watched this video and cares is beyond me, but almost a million subscribers at Audiopedia. Now, what this video is trying to tell you is that true polar wander... Let's go back. Planet or moon with is a solid body rotation of a planet or moon with respect to its spin axis, causing the geographic locations of the north and south poles to change. So what they're saying here is, is very simple. That the pole of the planet here shifts slowly and back again. That's a polar wander. It moves 10 to 20 degrees. And by moving in the direction of continents in this in this case, towards Greenland or North America, we are allowed to build ice on a continent, and that gives us glaciation. So true polar wander is the explanation that ice ages are caused by the pole shifting towards continents and then back away, and then towards continents. Because if the North Pole was here in Greenland or Canada, the, the rotational spin axis, well, what we know about the, the North Pole is that for eight months of the year, it's below freezing. So if eight months of the year, a continent was below freezing, it would certainly build ice the entire time. And that ice would spread and it would build up over time. 
deepening and deepening. So maybe the last ice age was because the true rotational pole was over Canada, where the Wisconsinian ice sheet formed 26,000 years ago and extended all the way down to North America. Maybe 40 degrees north latitude in America was actually 60 degrees north. Holy macaroni. That's polar wander. Now, crustal slip is a much different thing. And lost civilizations and Earth's crust shifts have been posited as early as the 1950s by Charles Hapgood and then has been rehashed by many others. Now, the polar... The, the crustal displacement theory is much different uh, because polar wander would sif simply be that the, the pole here moves and then re re returns. Similar to the Adam and Eve story where they say the pole shifts and then snaps back. That's the polar wander theory. Now the crustal displacement theory by Hapgood in the 1950s says that Something happens in the subsurface of the, our Earth which displaces the crust from the asthenosphere and it allows the continents to shift around while we're spinning a, on the axis. And it looks a little bit like this. So the Earth is spinning at the current North and South Pole and something happens electromagnetically to uncouple the crust from the planet. The planet continues to spin, but the crust slips and catastrophe happens. And then it gets reconnected and all is well again. Now, the only problem with this idea is that the haphazard nature of the crustal slip would not allow us to reconnect with the northern pole position, the rotational pole, which it seems like for the last million or so years has been pretty constant. There have been minor perturbations and people like Mario Build Up Reps and others have suggested that there has been pole shifts. There's no evidence of this nonsense here, the crustal slip from Hapgood and others. So if you're waiting for this to occur, geologically there's no evidence for the last billion years of any crustal slip events. There is evidence for minor perturbations in the position of the rotational axis and shifts in the magnetic field. But there's no real hard evidence of crustal slip anywhere in the world, except in the minds of schmucktards, like suspicious observers and, and others. So... But we, we will keep it as a 0.001% chance here of the crustal slip occurring. Now, I'm a suspicious observer, but I don't believe any of this garbage because I have a scientific background and I can, well, show you the evidence, which doesn't exist. And the work of Hapgood and others has been poo-pooed for decades. And there are tens of thousands of scientists like me that have gone over this work and they don't see any real good reason for it to be true. Hope you got something out of the video. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. What is going to happen, and we know happens all the time, well, po potentially true polar wander, but magnetic excursions happen, happen. The magnetic field wanes and waxes just like this cycle. Cycles occur every, all the time. And from the last million years, we know that there's been at least 10 major glaciations and glacial, well, hiatuses. And we're living in one of those. Those interglacials that we're now living are prosperous for civilizations. And then they end rapidly when it gets really white out. This is the heartbeat of the earth. And I've been studying it for four decades. I can show it to you in the rock record going back almost a billion years. No one knows what it is that is causing this pulse, that is causing the Yuga cycle, that is causing the 26,000 year catastrophe cycle that erases empires. No one knows. We're working on it one day at a time. Is it true polar wander? Probably not crustal slip, 
Hapgood is dead. But I digress. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. As we learn together and we put the pieces together as we move forward, onward and upward, positive and progressive, be safe. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. And we love you. And that's Bo to knowledge. Click on one of the other boxes to get up to speed. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Mm -hmm.